Hello, hello, and welcome back to the final build video in this series, and we're going to move right on here. And I happen to notice I forgot to do the seams here on the front of where it attaches to the neck. So I've gone and I've filled in these seams and I've sanded it down. And because I'm going to repaint this entire thing anyway with flat green, you know, I'm going to do the whole front area here and the bridge up here and repaint this all flat green. So first what I've done is I've gone and done a coat of primer over where I sanded to make sure that's looking good. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go over and paint this with flat green now because I felt the AJ green that I had used previously was just a little dark. And I like the way this color looks a lot better. It's closer. So I've got the uh, lower hull here and the upper hull here all taped off where I want to do some painting for the feathering and also a portion of the head and the neck here. And I'm going to use sky gray with the mix of some flat green. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to airbrush over this. I'm going to do it lightly. I'm not doing heavy coats. On the bottom and top, I'm going to do varying degrees. Some of it light, some of it a little darker or heavier just to get some shading going here. A little bit of variance in the color little heavier in some areas than others and you can see here after pulling it off you can see the variance in the shading especially here I did it heavier on these ends here where I did it lighter here and there's it's not a consistent color pattern it looks more worn and natural and again heavier here and you can see the variance here in this particular portion I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do a light misting coating of the same color over this whole portion on the top of the ship and I've got that done here and I'm going to add just a touch of yellow green to the same mix and now I've taped off another area of the upper hull and I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to get a varying bit of color and shading in here and on the bottom side I've taped off some more portions where I'm going to do it a little heavier get a little bit of a brighter different tone green going here and pull the tape off and you can see what I've done there and there's just different shades going on and so we've got the upper and lower hull the main painting with all the shading done I've also done a little bit of shading over these portions here the engines on the sides of the wings and now I've taped off and in these areas in here I'm going to do a mix like I did for the front. I'm going to do my, and in this portion of the neck here, my buff and dark iron paint and also these little spots here on the top portion of the neck. There's some areas here on the top of the front. And I'm just going to go over with my Tamiya buff and dark iron and bring in some more color here go over all these portions and then peel off our tape here and here's the patterns we have on the front and neck and then I'm going to add just a touch of Tamiya red brown to that same mix and on the top portion of the hull here I'm going to make it a little darker I've taped off some areas in the front here and just a little bit of a darker and reddish tone to it just to highlight and offset it and same thing on these portions here on this top just to give a little variance here and some color and you can see here the variance in tone what that's done to this and especially the front you can see the difference there then I've got some sea blue here. I'm going to use that instead of black for these dark areas. Black seems a little harsh to me. And I think this is going to look really nice with the green tones. And I'm going to do just a very light misting coat over these areas here on the front. Just to give a varying tone and along the back of the neck here. Very light here up front. And then heavy down the lower portion of the neck here and you can see how that's turned out and it's just a light shade difference here on this portion and I also did the underside little spot here 
and I'm doing the uh, ends and the top here uh, doing another little very light area right in here and it's just giving some various tones and deepening and darkening then I'm going to move on to our photo etch here and this portion I painted all the buff and dark iron there's going to be buff and dark iron here but the rest of these are green uh, for the most part most of this is buff and dark iron this little portion here I painted with the sea blue which goes on the bottom of the neck and then I've also done some flat green on these portions a little bit of the yellow green where needed um, again buff iron some flat red on these and yellow green on the antennas and then I've also done a little flat green on these portions the sea blue on that middle I also did a little bit of a lighter buff and dark iron on these panels on the bottom again just to give a little variance in highlighting so we've got all four sub assemblies painted ready to go with their basic primary colors all done up so again moving on I'm gonna attach these grills to the sides of this hull portion here and I've got those glued and secured in place and then I've gone over the entire area of all this with a clear coat for doing decals and weathering and detailing and you can see the clear coat on the neck and front here as well and I'm gonna start out with doing these decals we've got a couple to go on the top portion here the upper hull and I'm gonna use some of my micro set solution for doing decals I'm just gonna rub some on to the area of the model where I'm gonna attach the decal soak the decal and then just place it right on there and I'm trying to make it so that it runs parallel on this side here. And I'm going to go ahead and put the other decal on the other side. And we're just going to go through all the areas of the ship that have decals. And I'm just going to place those all into position. And again, with all these decals, I put a little bit of that microset solution on the model first. Just to help it set and secure that decal into position on the plastic. We got the big portion here that goes on the nose and you'll notice some wrinkles here but those will go away with time as it sets and dries but this portion here the big one is four separate pieces I'm going to do this off camera it's just too difficult this I'm going to use micro sol more solvent helps it get into the creases and set inside the recesses so this will all eventually set inside there and you'll be able to see that and you can see this piece here once dried is dried very nicely and is smooth and we have these pieces which set in there and you can see the indentation there from the panels and they've all set really nicely as I've just let them dry on here and this has also set in but the problem with this is I have these areas here that don't have decals covering so I'm going to have to paint those. I'm going to use some Viejo flat yellow with just a dab of some flat red in there because it's more of an orangish tone and try to get as close as possible and I'm going to paint up these portions that go in the yellow area. And Then I'm going to use some sky blue and I'm going to do this one on the left with sky blue and I added a bit of gray to the right side and then flat red in the top. Here I'm just going to do some dry brushing with my gray and flat green to pick up some highlights of panels all around the front here and you can see the lines where I've picked up some highlighting just to make it stand out and do some detailing there make some pop a little bit I've done a little bit on some of the piping and things on the sides here, on the back, on the edges to make those pop and stand out, and on the inside portion here as well. Now I'm going to do a wash over a lot of areas with my gray, green, and touch of yellow to them to get some grime inside these panel lines here. I've also done some inside the grill work here to make it look grungy. I'm doing a German gray wash and some of the recesses and stuff on the back portion of the ship here to make it look dirty. You can see the difference in these two pieces, the bottom one done, the top one not. 
And I'm going to do some of the German gray to pick up the uh, panel lines in the front portion here. And then on this decal to make it look a little worn and weathered, I'm doing a little bit of dry brushing with my gray green just to tone it down a bit so it's not so bright, not so new looking. And then I'm going to do a wash over the entire upper and lower hull with my gray green yellow solution to pick up the panel lines and make it look weathered and dirty. Did some over the decal here to tone it down and make it look a little worn. You can see it inside the recesses and panel lines there. So I'm going to go ahead and move on now and attach these side portions to the wings here. And this just fits on there and I'm going to do some glue down the edges here to secure it into place. And I've got that on both sides glued and secured and I have the wires taped up running to the interior. We've got a couple LEDs that go on this portion here that shine out the bottom here. So I'm going to go ahead and put those in place, glue those into position, and do a quick test and that's how those look. The clear plastic pieces go over these windows here and I've added some of my diffusion gel to diffuse the light. And then I have two more LEDs which go on the upper portion of the upper hole here which will light those windows up as you can see right here. They show up with that diffusion. In the neck there is another LED sticking out which once the neck goes through the front of the ship it goes in and attaches to the center portion of the lower hull and that is our blinking LED here which you can see working. Now I'm going to go ahead and attach the engine portion on the rear of the upper hull and I've glued that into place here and then I have these side portions that go along the back that will fill in between the upper and lower hull pieces. And there's another little piece that goes on the end here. And I've got all those glued into position and quick test and no light leak coming through there. However, there was a little bit and I went through with some of my liquid electrical tape on the inside and just kind of put over some little seams where there was some light leaking coming through. Now I've got a couple LEDs here which go on the sides which I've glued into place and when you do a test with those they highlight and light up the symbols on the upper portion of the hull there. And on these upper portions here I've removed the latex that I had covering the um, LED sections of the upper portion here and you can see when I plug that in it lights up and looks really nice. And I'm going to go ahead and remove the latex on these little portions on the sides here and on this back little portion of the wing. And turn those on, test them. They light up just fine. The interior ones, the other side, they're all lighting up and looking just great. I'm going to go ahead and remove this little spot and this little portion. And those are lighting up and looking good. In the back portion here of the head you can see that remove the tape from the lower portion of windows and those light up and are looking really nice as well. The tape on the bridge and I'm really happy with the way this is all looking. So I'm going to go ahead and move on here and we're going to secure the neck and front portion to the lower hull here. I'm going to glue this into place and fire it up We've got all the lights working, everything's fine. Pull some liquid latex out of here. There's going to be a little clear piece that I'll glue on there at a later point in time. And we're going to move on and attach all the photo etch pieces to the front portion here. And we've got a couple pieces that go right into here. We have a little antenna one here, antenna two, antenna three over there on the left. Um, this antenna, I realized I screwed up and folded it the wrong direction. Uh, it was a mistake after <clears throat> more closely examining. They glue together and that top portion where I have it folded actually folds back the opposite direction. So I've refolded those, glued them together and that's how that looks. And this little guy goes right back in here. 
And then I've gone and I've attached the rest of these photo etch pieces in their places on the front. I've also taken some pastel, dark pastel, and darkened up inside the engine there. And I'm going to go around with a little bit of Viejo rust, do some rust all along the back portion of the engines. Now my client is going to be hanging this model, so I am helping him out by, I've taken some fishing line and secured it on the inside here. And when the top portion of the hole goes on, that'll hold it in place. And it'll be a nice place for this to hang, and I've done it on both sides. You can see the fishing line here and fishing line here, and it'll be nice and secured internally and hang it really nice. I've also done a portion on the front here, which comes out the back of the head. Um, this one runs around the underside here. You can see right there the fishing line running around to secure it. But what I've also done is I have gone now and I've painted that line flat green to match the color of the model. So you can actually barely see it now. So we're going to move on to wiring this sucker up. And here we have the power supply and board that powers up all the kit lights. And first thing I want to know is it uses three double A's, which is four and a half volts. I'm just making sure that that is in fact what's coming out of here. And we do have four and a half volts. There's no resistors or anything working. So I have this buck converter here, which will take any voltage in up to 24. I'm going to send it nine volts and output what I need it to output. Um, because I'm powering with a nine volt supply, I have nine volt going in and I'm going to adjust this here for the output side and I'm gonna crank the output down to four and a half volts to power the kit lights. That way my nine volts coming into the model will power the LED strips for all the windows in the main front and everything else will power off four and a half volts. And with that set I'm gonna go ahead and put some hot glue on this pot here to keep it from moving. Normally I would use nail polish or something but actually don't have any around the house. So here we have the wires coming out of the neck. Um, two of the wires here, or these four wires, are the wires that control my LED strips, two different LED strips. And I have gone and combined the hots and the grounds on both of those together into one pair of wires to hook up to my board. I also have a 10 foot cable here which we're going to use to power it. I got bare ends here and I've soldered on a connector here, a female connector for the 9 volt power supply so the 9 volt power supply can just plug right into this. That way he can run the cord up along his ceiling since he's hanging it and then he can plug a power supply in. And in fact I do have 9 volts running through that cable. So I've glued and secured my cable here. I've attached two ends to plug in or to solder to my converter and this power cable will run out the back alongside the fishing line where it'll be hung. And I've got all of my kit cables here bundled up. I have my two wires for the power cable here ready to go. And I'm just going to feed these through the top portion of the hull and secure the upper hull to the lower hull. Then we've got a little clamping to hold the two halves together, let that dry, and top and bottom halves of the ship are now glued and secured. So with all of my cables coming out into the upper hole here, I've plugged in the kit cables to the board, and I'm going to hot glue the board to the side here. And then I've got my little converter here, and I've got my input on the right side here. And I've got my two power cable wires, so I'm going to solder in my two wires from the power and my two wires for the LED strips. And I'm going to do a test here, and I've got four and a half volts coming out the back side, so I'm going to solder on the kit board to my converter. And do a quick power up here, and bam! All the kit lights are firing up with four and a half volts and my lights in front are working with the nine volts. So I'm also going to hot glue my little converter board down here in the bottom. And with that glued in place we have our final piece here. And I'm going to go ahead and take this last plug and plug it into the kit board right here on the side. And then we're going to secure this upper portion into place and glue it down and secure it. 
And one more quick power up and that top portion also lights up as well with the uh, power cable. You can see the lights here and is lighting up with the four and a half volts from the converter. So now we have the last few things to put on this little light here on the bottom. We have these little pieces to put on towards the front bottom. We have this little flashing piece that needs to have clear red painted over it so that it will shine red. Don't know why they didn't supply it in red plastic. But I've airbrushed that and you can see it's nice and shiny red. And then that just fits right on the top of the neck here like so. And then test and it works just fine. And that does it. Everything is together. All the parts are assembled. Um, I'm just going to take some time and just go over it once more to check for any light leaks and possibly do a little bit more washing and weathering. But uh, that's it. And next time will be the final reveal. So until next time, thanks for watching. Hey, if you like watching my videos, please feel free to give them a like. And so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos, click subscribe.